let's do a video tutorial and a pattern review for this beautiful camera bag by I think so this is definitely a beginner's bag because there are hardly any hardware to this bag there are no zippers at all whatsoever on the back on the front on the inside no zipper the only hardware you really have to install are the two magnetic snaps here at the front the d-rings for the strap and completely optional a rivet on each side but that is optional you don't have to do it the only other thing is that you need to add velcro or hoops and loops on the front for the inner flap and on the inside for the insert the insert is really easy to make you will feel accomplished when you finish this bag if you have not made many bags before the only pocket in this bag is the front pocket. There are no zipper pockets, nothing on the inside, nothing. And this front pocket, it really is very easy to make. Don't feel intimidated by the curve. I go in detail on how to make the nice curve. I also have a video here where I show you step-by-step step how to make the gusset look smooth and nice. So don't feel intimidated by that and i go in details on how to make this bag so this is a video tutorial but i also want to say that at the end of the video i will be having a pattern review and it is important that you watch that pattern review especially if you're a beginner bag maker and i'm going to say this because as i was making the bag and following the written instructions there were some steps that were not listed in the written instructions that I was able to do or cut because I've been making bags for years. But if I was a beginner bag maker, I would have missed them. And the bag wouldn't look as professional, I think, without those little details. So make sure you watch until the end of this video to learn from me, my experience, as I was following the written instructions for this pattern. But in general, I'm very happy. I'm satisfied. It looks very nice. If you want to get the pattern, the link is down in the description. I am not an affiliate. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just sharing my experience with you so any other things that you may need any other materials links uh, information that you may need to be able to complete this bag are also down in the description of this video but before we start welcome to my youtube channel i am so glad that you're here today and if you're new hi i'm ali in this YouTube channel, I share sewing and craft videos, tutorials, tips, pattern reviews, so that you and I can make beautiful things together. Okay, you guys, let's get started. So here are the pieces that I already cut for this uh, camera bag. And you can see the video where I used uh, freezer paper to cut the pattern. Uh, for this bag and you can watch that uh, after you watch this video or you can go watch it and come back and continue watching this video so that you can see how the bag was put together but anyway exterior pieces I'm using the chambray and the accent pieces um, the original pattern doesn't call for accent pieces but I wanted to do something a little bit different so here they are and of course my waterproof canvas for all my lining and my um, insert for the, the camera. And what I love about waterproof canvas, and I have said this, but I will say it again, is that you don't have to add interfacing. So that saves a lot of time, step and money. 
I did use weft interfacing for all my exterior fabric. This time I used Pilon SF101, but most of the time I use weft interfacing from a Fabric Wholesale Direct. I am not an affiliate to any of these products or companies. I'm just letting you know what I used and what I prefer to use, but that's what I used this time. To make this bag, you will definitely use Wonder Clips, a marking tool to match your, the color of your fabric. So I have these uh, two. This is a re erasable ink and this is a chalk. Your Seam Reaper. Unfortunately, you may have to use it. Double-sided tape. This is a must tool for this bag. Small scissors and even bigger fabric scissors fray check rulers a quilting ruler so i have this little quilting ruler as an example but i used uh, this one which is a 1 by 12 i also used a 3 by 18 a 6 by 6 pretty much any rulers you may have when you're working on your project you may need to press your seams out and if you have a uh, regular cotton fabric, you will use an iron, but if not, like me, I use this little seam roller, and I use this tool to kind of push the corners out when I'm turning my pattern inside out, and this is um, for clay, actually. This is a tool that you use when you work with clay. For this back hardware, you will need hoops and loops, you will need two sets of magnetic snaps, like this one. And for the magnetic snaps, I is useful to have a small plier. It's not necessary, but it really helps. And some duct tape or masking tape, as well as a piece of uh, foam or Decoville Heavy or anything like that to put behind the prongs. You will also need two D-rings and a slider for your strap. And this is optional, but it's really nice to add a couple of rivets. And for that, I'm using my cam snap. And so I have this uh, silver rivet. I will need two of these. So this is the cap and this is this, these are the studs. And the die for my rivets are here for my cam snap. And for the camera insert, uh, the pattern designer says to get a half an inch foam sheets, 24 by 24. I couldn't find that specific. And this is a 24 by 72 inches foam. Um, it's half an inch thick. So at least I got that. It's a little bit bigger. And it's just regular foam. It's easy to cut. I can cut this with my regular scissors. And look how easy, yeah, it's like. So this should work. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut now the pieces that I will need for the insert, uh, the camera insert where my camera is gonna go. And this is going to protect my camera. To trace the foam, you will need a permanent marker and your quilting ruler. And you can use regular scissors to cut this foam because it's very soft. Or you can also use your rotary cutter with your quilting ruler. And you may not need to trace it. But if you need to trace it, then the per permanent marker is the best way to do it. And that's it. It's very, very simple. My pattern here has the marking where my magnetic snap is going to go. And so, as you can see, I already did it here. What I did is that I found the center of this drawing and I cut a little hole there. 
So I place my pattern on my fabric and where I cut the little hole in the center, I drew, you know, the marking. So for that, I take the washer, place the hole, the little hole that is here on the washer over the cutting, the hole that I cut where the magnetic snap is supposed to go. Place that there. And then I drew that circle, okay? Once I drew the circle, I removed the pattern. I placed the washer right back on that circle marking, and then I'm going to draw the two little lines right next to it, okay? And so that tells me that's where I'm going to place my magnetic snap. So, so now we install the magnetic snap. And you need to open, you know, a little bit of a, a slit on here and I use my seam reaper for that but I also use the scissors because with the seam reaper I'm afraid that I'm going to push it too hard and then rip the fabric with the scissors I have a little more control but the seam reaper helps to just open up the fabric a little bit and then with the small scissors just finish cutting it okay take the magnetic snap and you're going to place the prongs through that opening and you're going to take that little piece of Decoville heavy or foam or anything you have and just open a couple of slits, place it behind the prongs, place the washer and if you have a small plier, this is optional but it really helps, you can then open up the prongs and make them flat on the back of your uh, piece of fabric on the back of the magnetic snaps. We're going to do the same with the second one. And as you can see, they're installed. Now, this is completely optional, but it will really, really uh, help in the future is to put a little piece of duct tape or masking tape on the back of uh, the magnetic snaps to kind of cover the prongs so they don't rip your other fabric with the wear and tear. At this point, we're going to now do the same for the exterior main pocket. Now we're going to take the two flap pieces, exterior and lining, joining them right sides together. Use some clips or pins to keep the two pieces of fabric together before you take it to the sewing machine to join them. Following the seam allowance in the pattern, go ahead and stitch all on the sides and bottom of the flap, but not the top. Leave the top open. Make sure to secure your stitching by back stitching at the beginning and the end of your stitch line. And just simply follow the seam allowance that it was given in the pattern. Take your time going through the curves and also make sure that you are careful because the magnetic snaps are there and you don't want to stitch over them so if you follow your seam allowance you should be okay make sure you are aware the magnetic snaps are there and just be careful
Before turning your flap right side out, you need to clip the curves. So for that, you can use your scissors or you can use this tool. It's completely optional. But is, this is a pattern hole punch or nutcher. And it's really handy because you can control how deep you want to cut it. You know, you don't want to touch. You don't want to cut your stitching. But if you don't have this tool, it's fine. You can also use scissors. Just make sure that you cut all the little notches around the curves every little bit that you can and do not cut the stitching okay do not cut this the stitch line um, but just go ahead and do this on both curves of this flap now you're going to turn your flap right side out and when you do that, you're going to start pushing the seam out um, because you want it to be as flat as possible. Just make sure that you get as much of the seam stretched out or pushed out as possible. You see this seam here? You have to push that out before you top stitch it. And Many times I don't want to turn on the hot iron just to do that for a small piece or maybe the material that I'm using is like faux leather or vinyl. You really can't press it and you got to push that. So I use this little seam roller and it works wonderful. It's one tool I keep handy all of the time. So now I'll go ahead and top stitch your flap using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance 4 millimeter stitch length and you're going to stitch on the sides, the curves, and the bottom. But do not stitch the top, okay? And if you notice that any of your seam is not completely pushed out, make sure you push it out before you stitch over it. Next, you're going to make the inner flap. And you're going to follow the same procedure as when we did the outer flap. You're going to join the pieces together and stitch around it, but do not stitch the top. So now let's install the hoops and loop. And you choose whichever side you want to, it doesn't matter. Uh, I am going to pick the scratchy side in this, you know, for, for the inner flap. You're going to place it at the bottom of the inner flap and you are going to just match it based on where the pattern uh, design tells you it goes. We're going to use double sided tape to keep the hoops and loop in place while we stitch in it. If you don't have double sided tape, you can also use fabric glue. Either one works. I'm going to use my ruler here. I just want to make sure that I place my hoops and loop evenly. It's not crooked. So keeping the hoops and loop in place, I'm just peeling off the double sided tape a little bit and there it is. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch it all along the sides, bottom and around the curves. Do not stitch on the top following the seam allowance from the pattern and you're also going to stitch the uh, velcro the hoops and loop i'm going to start stitching the flap together first on the sides and the bottom and then i'm going to add then i'm going to stitch the hoops and loops when i stitch the hoops and loops i stitch it twice i go around it two times because I just want to make sure it is secure and it will not come off eventually with the wear and tear of the bag. So I do double stitching and then, and then of course I secure my stitching by back stitching at the beginning and the end. Consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel if you have learned something today. We're going to make the front pocket now. For that, you need the exterior front pocket, the one that has the magnetic snaps that we installed, the 
lining exterior pocket your gussets which are these two pieces i use my contrasting fabric as well as the gusset lining at this point we're going to join the two pieces of gussets for the exterior and the lining using the seam allowance listed in the pattern make sure you do that for both now open the seam and make sure you press it and i personally like to top stitch my seam in place i think it gives it a nice touch and it helps keep the seam open and in place first you're going to find the middle point for your gusset and for your panel with the right side facing you you're going to fold this and find that middle point and you're going to do the same with a gusset this is easier because i is joined in the center and you're going to match both centers okay like that then you're going to open it you can also place a marking or a little snip to mark the center and the first thing i do is that i put wonder clips right along that bottom where the center is then i take my gusset and i take the end of the gusset and i align it towards the top of the panel on both sides then i take some wonder clips and i align the straight sides of the panel along that gusset perfect so at this point you have your curves that are not clipped or they're not pinned yet and you have your gusset here so the way that you're going to stretch your gusset open it up is by clipping the curves and once that is flat like that you can push it to match the curve and the fabric is going to give in with the panel against the table so flat against the table you're going to now place some wonder clips going to do the same on the other side at this point you will stitch your pieces together now
look how smooth it is. Now let's join the exterior and lining front pocket. And you're going to join all the seams here. Make sure they match. Um, that makes your bag looks nice and professional. So you're going to match all the seams and then you're going to join them using your wonder clips. You're going to join them on the top, the sides, and all along the bottom. Now you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're going to start stitching from the center, the sides, the bottom, and then the top again. And you're going to leave an opening. And that opening is where you're going to birth the back through. going to place the front pocket on the front exterior panel and the pattern instructions again doesn't tell you the measurements it just tells you to follow the drawing on the pattern for the placement so I measured it based on what the pattern says and I'm just going to place my pocket here okay and so for this, I think I'm going to use double-sided tape that I have here. And I'm just going to put a little, a couple of pieces of double-sided tape, at least on the sides, where I place my markings, and here on the bottom. It has a curve, so it may go past that, but at least the measurement here on the bottom of, as of where to place it. So now I'm just going to place the bottom edge of the pocket gusset along that bottom marking and the side markings over the double-sided tape. And so just make sure that you place it right on the line or right on the marking. You don't have to use double-sided tape, you can use pins. What's important is that you make sure it is not crooked, that the pocket is straight and even, and it looks correct. And so you can use pins for this process if you don't have double-sided tape. Now you can take this to the sewing machine and you can actually start sewing it on the right hand side. You're going to start from the top, go all the way to the bottom around the curve and up. And you're going to stitch at one eighth of an inch seam allowance, about three and a half millimeter stitch length. Now make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and at the end 
of your stitching and that will secure the pocket in place. Now take the exterior gussets and we're going to join them to just make a one entire piece and you're going to just stitch them on one side following the seam allowance provided in the pattern. So I'm making the connectors out of fabric and I cut two pieces of fabric of my exterior fabric and the rectangles are four and a half inches long by two inches wide. So at this point I'm just going to hide the raw edges and for that I'm going to use my iron and you're going to fold the short edges of the tabs in towards the raw side, the inside, by about half an inch and just press it. And you're going to do that for um, both short ends. Next you're going to mark the center crease and by that you will fold uh, the tab in half along the long edge and just slightly press it with your iron just to mark the center of the tab. Then take one of the long sides and fold it matching that center crease and press it. You can use starch if you want on this step and that is also optional. And the final side for your connector should be one inch wide. If you have any raw edges like this, just push them in or just trim off any loose thread that you may have. Just test, make sure that your connector fits perfectly and it should. We're not gonna stitch it right now. We're just going to put them aside. Uh, we'll be stitching them soon. Once you stitch your two side gussets together, make sure you press your seam open. Then we're going to add the connectors. And for that, you're going to grab your connector. I join the opening. I just stitch them together to keep it in place. And I also have the little uh, gussets that go over the connectors on the side. I folded them uh, along the raw edges to obviously cover the raw edges. You're gonna find the half point of your gusset here and you're going to mark that half point. And you're also going to mark the distance where you have to place your connector. And that distance is given in the pattern instructions. Also mark the half point of your connector. You're going to match those two half points, making sure your connector is centered. You're gonna take this to the sewing machine. You can put a pin here if you want to help it stay in place, if that makes it easier for you. And stitch it together. I did a square, about an inch square around the connector. Take the little side gussets and place them on top of the connector. I want to place them about half an inch from the D-ring and I want them to cover the stitch line that I just did on my connector. So make sure that you place it, that it looks straight, it's not crooked. I'm going to put a couple of pins just to hold it in place and I'm going to take them to the sewing machine and just stitch along the top and bottom of the side gusset here using one eighth of an inch seam allowance, three and a half, three to three and a half millimeter stitch length. The next step is completely optional but it really adds a nice touch to your back, which is to add a rivet to uh, the area where the connector is. And I already punched a hole in there and I'm using my cam snaps. Um, these are eight millimeter rivets. The pattern instructions, she recommends a 10 millimeter, but I don't have a 10 millimeter, so I just, I'm just gonna use what I have. 
I have a full video on how to add rivets here in my channel. Adding the rivet also provides extra security to your connector. I like to double stitch this area a lot because there's a lot of wear and tear and this is where your strap is going to be. So there's going to be a lot of uh, pressure holding on to your valuables inside the bag. So you definitely want to have extra protection in this area. I would even stitch over this again. I may do that. But with the stitching, I stitched the connector. I stitched over it with a little piece of gusset here and then I'm adding a rivet. So I think, I mean, it should be okay. Now grab the exterior panel with a front pocket that we made previously and find a half point. Okay, so you're gonna fold it in half and find that half point and, and just draw a little line there. Take your gusset and also find the half point, which is easy because it's your seam right there. And with the right sides together, you're going to join the gusset to that exterior panel. And just put a wonder clip. Then take the end of the gusset and align it to the top of your exterior panel on one side and then on the other side. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did when we attached the gusset to our front pocket here. You're going to now match all the sides of the gusset along the exterior panel. And if you need to clip the edges here, go ahead and do that so that you can give the fabric room to expand and go around the curves. And make sure that you cut the gusset, not the back panel. Okay. Here it is, right? You added the first part of the gusset here. Now to improve the final look of your bag, it is recommended that you trim off some of these curves, uh, the seams, a little bit. It, that really helps reduce some of the bulkiness. When you turn it right side out. And you can also press it if your fabric allows for that. Take uh, your iron or, you know, and just press it a little bit so the seams are, uh, you know, flat and makes it look nice when it's finished. The next step is to add the back exterior to the gusset here. You're going to take the exterior, you're going to join it, and you're just going to do the exact same thing that you did for the front. So turn your exterior now right side out and it's going to look like this. Take the flap that we made a few minutes ago that has the magnetic snaps and you're going to pin the flap and kind of baste stitch it on the back of your exterior panel here, right sides together. So. This is the right side, and this is the right side or the exterior side, and they are matching. And you want to match them right where the seam is, okay? You want to place your flap right where your seam is that is joining the exterior gusset and the exterior back panel. When you join the flap to the back panel here, make sure that your seam here is open, okay? Baste stitch it at one eighth of an inch seam allowance, four millimeter stitch length. Next, we're going to take that inner flap that we made a few 
minutes ago that has the hoops and loops here and you're going to baste it also to the exterior flap on the lining side of the exterior flap and just try to align it you know towards the center uh, because there uh, this one is smaller and you're going to do the same you're going to baste these together make sure that is on the lining side of the flap and that you can see the hoops and loops. Okay, now we can see it has the flap and the other flap. <laughs> now we are going to put this on the side for now because we are going to make the lining. And we're just pretty much gonna follow the exact same process. You're going to take your two panels and the two gusset panels. And with the right sides together on your gusset, you're going to join them following the seam allowance right there. Open it or make the seam flat. And then we're going to join the gussets to the front and the back lining panels. So remember, I almost forgot, you're going to leave an opening here of about four inches, okay? So I marked here between my two wonder clips, it's about four inches wide, and this is at the bottom of the panel and the gusset and that is so that you can turn the lining right side out so make sure that you start stitching on the sides and the other side but leave an opening here of about four inches finish the lining make sure that you leave the opening we're going to join now the lining and the exterior so bring the exterior out you're going to join both right sides together so you're going to insert the exterior with the right side out inside your lining that has the right side in and make sure that the opening is towards the back of your exterior panel here. So this is my panel that is fully sewn together. And he says, this is my panel with a front pocket. I'm going to insert it here. And the flap and everything goes in there. So grab your wonder clips and you're going to open the seam on your exterior and you're going to open the seam of your lining and you're going to match those seams together. And maybe here's easier to see. So here's your seam and open this. And you see that seam right there and then the one on the exterior, you're gonna match them and your seams are going to be joined. Just make sure that all your um, edges match and everything is together and just take some wonder clips and join them together because you're gonna take this to the sewing machine you're going to stitch it following the seam allowance all around the top edge here, joining your exterior and your lining. And just make sure the flap is inside, in between the exterior and the lining, okay? No. 
now um, I'm going to turn this right side out through this opening right here it may take a minute to get it done um, I feel like I could reduce the seam allowance here by half the instructions don't say anything about that but I think it will be a good idea um, only because I know that many times when you fold these things the right side out uh, there is a lot of bulkiness and I have to top stitch it so I don't know I think I'm just gonna do it especially in the area where I have the flap there's a lot of bulkiness in this area and reducing some of the seam allowance helps that is obviously optional it's not in the instructions but it's a good practice I guess so once you do that go ahead and start turning your bag right side out through this opening before you close the opening just make sure that you get your hand in there and push any of your seams out okay because once you close it you're not going to be able to do that once you do that just fold the seam here you're opening you're going to fold it in and you're going to have kind of like the, the fabric is going to fold to the seam allowance that you already have and just close it okay stitch it uh, here closing this opening you can take your iron and press the top of your bag here so that your um, seam is pushed up as much as possible okay like that and we're doing this because we're now going to top stitch it around the top and make sure the flap is away um, like this so when you top stitch it you don't top stitch with the flap inside you want to top stitch it with a flap for the interior flap uh, open so I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch it all around it making sure that when I top stitch it my flap is away and I'm stitching on the exterior side here and for the top stitch you can use a three and a half or four millimeter stitch length. The next step is adding the other side of your hoops and loops to the exterior panel here. The pattern instructions say to get your pattern and measure where the placement is. But I don't wanna do all that because it's not flat, so it's not going to be very accurate. So what I'm going to do is make my um, bag here square, take the flap and try and make sure that I align it where I know that it where it's going to naturally fall okay where my hoops and loops are it kind of lands there and it's in the center of my front pocket you see that it's in the center of the front pocket okay so from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to draw a line kind of this is a removable marker. So in anything that you know is going to, that you can erase. And that's where I'm going to place my hoops and loops, okay? You can pro probably not see it very well, but that is, you know, I'm trying to just align it. 
I'm going to take some double sided tape and just place a couple of strips of double sided tape in between those two lines. I have my hoops and loops together, okay, right, right here. So what I'm going to do is peel off the double sided tape and carefully place my hoops and loops, uh, the other side of my hoops and loops there. So I'm just matching where I put my lines and then I'm just going to fold it and I'm going to press it to help the stickiness of the double-sided tape attach to my hoops and loops to the bottom. Very carefully, I'm going to remove the top, the scratchy side, leaving the soft side at the bottom. Now, the beauty of this is that you can, you know, reattach it if you need to, but this will temporarily hold your soft side of your hoops and loop until you take it to the sewing machine and you stitch it. So now take it to the sewing machine and stitch it a couple of times. I stitch it twice, all around, all four sides, two times at three, three and a half millimeter stitch length. And that's because this area is going to have a lot of uh, uh, usage, right? You're gonna be opening the flap a lot. So I want to make sure my hoops and loops don't come off. We need to attach the rest of the hoops and loops to the camera bag insert here. And there are some markings for where the hoops and loops go, as well as some stitch lines that we have to follow. You will add the hoops and loops first before joining the pieces together. So we're going to do one right now, but then you'll have uh, the square one here that you have loop, hoops and loops on each side as well. The bottom part of the in, the back insert does not have hoops and loops, but you still have to, we still have to stitch it together. So I'm trying to find a way to make this easy on me to know exactly where I was going to place my hoops and loops. Okay. So what I decided to do was I took my pattern and I cut a hole where my hoops and loop is supposed to go. So that way I could draw the placement on my fabric. And I align my pattern, make sure that it's, it's straight and flat. You don't have to draw the entire rectangle, but I'm just going to draw just a few lines like this, just enough to help me as a guide to know where I'm going to place my hoops and loops. So that's one side. And then on the other side, I'll do the same. Now with the stitch line, that's a little bit trickier, but um, I'm going to place a line here and place a line over here like this. That is going to help me. And I'm using this blue ink. It is uh, removable with the heat, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to use this. I mean, I probably would have used another color, but it's all right, it'll, it'll be fine. At this point, then I'm just gonna choose whichever side, I guess the, the scratchy side is what I'm going to apply here and then I'll measure it. Okay, now I have all my markings. I'm just gonna grab my double-sided tape and place my hoops and loops in those markings. And as you can see, I already joined it, but this is the scratchy side and I'm just gonna place it there. I 
can have side over here. So this is the long side and then on the little square side I'm going to put the the soft side of my hoops and loops. So I guess these the soft side is the loops, I think. I'm not sure. Great. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stitch stitch them together uh, around the edges a couple of times, just like we did before. After adding the hoops and loops, here is one of the uh, inserts and here's the other side so right sides together and you're going to do the same with the other with the square ones just join the right sides together and stitch it on the sides and the bottom leaving the open uh, one side open on the top and just follow the the seam allowance now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. Okay, before you turn it right side out, make sure that you clip the corners right there. Don't cut the stitching, of course, um, but I think that will work. And then also on this side. Okay, perfect, almost there. Almost there, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Next is stitching it along that those stitch lines and just verify with your pattern make sure that the the lines are where they're supposed to be and before you stitch it make sure that your seam is pushed out if you need to press it go ahead and press it at this moment to flatten your seam now get the foam pieces because we're going to insert them into the compartment here. There are two larger square ones and they go here where the hoops and loops are. And we also have, we have three of the same size. They're like medium sized rectangles. One goes with the little insert, the square one. And then the other two go in between the bigger ones right here. Okay, perfect. So that's one side and then the other side. Okay, great. So now we have these. Next, we're going to take the other side, the bottom, and we're pretty much going to do the same. Just join right sides together. In this case, there are no markings or placement of Velcro or hoops and loops or anything like that. So just the two sides together, right right sides together, and you're going to stitch on both long sides and just pick one of the short ends to stitch and then the other one you're going to leave open because that's where you're going to insert your other piece of foam. So take it to the sewing machine, stitch it with the seam allowance provided in the pattern, turn it right side out and insert the piece of foam. So 
So now we're just going to fold in the raw edges and stitch it in place for all of the three pieces. So I have the, this is the bottom of the insert and I'm going to do the same here on this side, okay? And the same for the long side so that it can be close together. And this one also after you close it, you will also join them together uh, like this. Fold the raw edges in and stitch it along the top. So here we have our three inserts. We have the bottom completed, the divider on the inside, and the actual insert itself. And this is the exterior, okay? Because this is where your seam uh, allowance is, where you stitched it together. So now we're going to turn it right side out like this, and insert it into our bag. Bring your bag over and let's push the insert inside the bag. Making sure it's all the way to the bottom. Then let's put the bottom piece. And lastly, the divider. And the Velcro is on the inside and so you fold your divider like this and you can just, you know, insert it like that but if you need more space you can also flip it and join the divider here on this side and there it is so as you may have noticed during the process i kind of complained here and there about a couple of things. The one thing that kind of bothered me the most about this pattern instructions was that there were no measurements on the pattern instructions for the placement of the magnetic snaps and the Velcro and the front pocket. I feel like, yes, I have the pattern. Yes, the pattern tells me like the drawing as of where to place my magnetic snaps and Velcro and whatever. But I also want to have the distance, the measurement from like the edge to the center is one inch from the top to the bottom is an inch and a half. I feel like having those measurements really help you make sure that you're placing it in the right place, especially towards the end if you have like the exterior and then the front pocket on top of it, there is volume there. You know, it's no longer a flat piece of fabric. I think it makes it easier and it gives you a better opportunity to make less mistakes if not only you have the drawing on the actual pattern, that's nice, but I think having the measurements on the written instructions as of where you need to place your hardware, it's super important, in my opinion. Another thing is that throughout the pattern instructions, there were a couple of times where the designer mentioned top stitching here and there. But I feel like in order for the bag to look really nice and professional, you need to be able to press the seams out. If you can't top stitch it, do it and, and press the bag as you go along, you know, as you saw with my bag, I'm using waterproof canvas. So I really didn't want to use my iron to press because of the heat. But if you're using quilting cotton or home decor fabric or anything that you can put heat to it, do it because it will make your bag look more professional, less homemade and more handmade, if that makes sense. Now the exterior pocket can be a little bit tricky to place on top of the exterior panel because you don't want to put your exterior pocket on your bag crooked, right? Like you want it to be straight. So I believe that definitely for the exterior pocket should have been some type of measurement. 
of course, you know, you have the pattern and then you have to, you can measure from the edge to the center, like how many inches or whatnot. But I just think that it would be nice to have that information in the written instructions already. Now let's talk about the camera insert. I used waterproof canvas and I think that was kind of like a mistake on my part. The pattern designer suggests to use suede for the insert. And I see why it's softer and it's easier to like insert the foam and fold the top edges and all of that. So if you are using uh, a softer fabric for the insert, go for it. Now, one thing that was not mentioned in this pattern when making the insert, and I caught it because I've been, like I said before, I have been making bags for a little while now. If you're new at bag making, you could easily miss this. When you're stitching, you know, the, the stitch lines in the center to divide and, and, and put your foam inside, you need to stop at least half an inch from the top edge. Otherwise, if you stitch all the way to the top, you are not going to be able to fold in the seam at the top and close the insert. And that is not mentioned in the instructions. And I mentioned it in the video. You saw it. If you saw the video, you saw that. But that is like very important. Otherwise, you'll have to take all the stitches out with your seam ripper. And we know, we all know how much we like using that seam ripper and start again and stop at least half an inch from the top so that you can then fold your fabric. I didn't catch it at the first insert I did. And so at the end, I ended up just folding my fabric twice over my stitching. The good thing is that I used waterproof canvas so the, my fabric won't fray. But if you're using quilt and cotton, you can do that because then you're going to have raw edges. It's going to look ugly and your, your fabric is going to fray. So just very important that you keep that in mind. But other than that, it's a very nice pattern, very easy bag to make. And finally, as you notice, here's the strap. It is an adjustable strap but it is not removable. You can make it removable if you want to. And as you can see, it's a double-sided strap. It has webbing on one side and home decor fabric on the other side. If you wanna learn how I make this strap, go check out my next video here. Ciao.